In a bizarre decision that doesn't appear to have been initiated by Donald Trump, the United States has decided to triple its nuclear energy capacity, triple it, with an enormous expansion likely to cost hundreds of billions of dollars. The bizarre turn of events is coming at a time in which solar and batteries combined are cheaper than the cost of any form of fossil fuel energy. Hello my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, you're watching The Electric Viking. And I should point out, I have spoken at numerous uh, events recently on the declining costs of solar, wind and batteries, but particularly solar and batteries. And why I don't think nuclear on a logical basis is necessary. And it's also, it's also very problematic. I'll explain why in just a minute. Now the US is planning an enormous expansion, building hundreds of new large reactors and also small modular reactors. In other words, the United States is gonna be peppered with nuclear reactors. This is in coming in spite of Texas in installing enough renewable energy over the coming years to potentially be 100% renewable by 2035. The US government has established a target to deploy 200 gigawatts of new capacity by 2050. This will more than triple US nuclear energy capacity based on 2020 numbers. This new capacity gains will come from multiple sources, including building new plants, including large and small modular and even micro reactors, and including generation three plus water cooled designs and generation five designs, upgrading existing reactors and restarting reactors that have retired for economic reasons. They were retired for economic reasons because they are very expensive to run, but the US government said, no, 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 let's restart them. To achieve this, the US government is establishing nearer term targets and it's prepared to spend hundreds of billions of dollars. Now keep in mind, nuclear power plants cost on average three times more than their quoted numbers. They're exceptionally expensive and usually take around 10 to 17 years to manufacture. The US plans to accelerate the capability of the nuclear energy deployment ecosystem by ramping to a sustained pace of producing 15 gigawatts per year by 2040 in support of both US and global project deployments. Now here in Australia, by 2035, we will be more than 80% renewables. Some locations, including one major city here in Australia, will be 100% renewable within the next two years and that's without any hydropower whatsoever, or nuclear power whatsoever. I question why this is meant to be logical. The cost of nuclear power plants has not gone down, whereas the cost of renewables has declined by more than 90% over the past 12 years. According to a new roadmap, the near-term 2035 deployment target reflects the urgency needed to make domestic nuclear energy expansion possible. The roadmap explained that adding 35 gigawatt by 2035 will put the US towards a 15 gigawatt annual deployment pace by 2040, bringing the 200 gigawatt target within reach by 2050. The 2035 target includes capacity gains from all sources, both operating and under construction. Achieving the 2035 deployment target requires near-term action to establish orders of sufficient quantity for multiple reactor designs. Interesting engineering says that to achieve this target, the US aims to build new large reactors, small modular reactors and micro reactors and extend, expand and restart old retired existing nuclear reactors. The current US operating fleet of 94 reactors comprises large, light, water-cooled, mostly gigawatt scale, utilizing low enriched uranium or LEU fuel. The US plans to establish new large reactors by leveraging existing nuclear sites. Among the 54 sites with operating reactors and 11 where reactors have retired, a recent Department of Energy study identified 41 sites with the land, water, and other conditions to accommodate up to 60 gigawatts of new large reactors. Now you might be wondering, identifying sites, well, wouldn't be that difficult, surely. Well, actually it is difficult because as you can imagine, nobody wants to live within a hundred miles of a nuclear reactor. Trust me, nobody does. So 
the US government has to find sites where basically nobody lives. But at the same time, if people live too far away, then the transmission lines that have to be built from the nuclear reactor all the way to the people in the city are quite expensive. So juggling finding the right site is more challenging than you would first think. Several of the 54 sites were originally designed for two or more reactors, but only one is operating. Between 2007 and 2009, 17 companies submitted applications for combined construction and operating licenses to build 28 new reactors. Many sites that would have hosted those 28 reactors are prime candidates for new large reactors, says the US government. In addition, the US plans to develop many new small modular reactors. There are significant opportunities for SMR siting or small modular reactors at existing reactor sites and coal-fired power plant sites that have recently retired or will soon retire. Now here in Australia, we have taken up the habit of building solar and battery farms on coal-powered sites that have been retired. I suggest the US could um, maybe learn something from that. Such coal to nuclear transitions are particularly compelling, says Interesting Engineering, because they can reuse existing transmission, water, and land-based infrastructure to reduce costs and leverage the existing workforce. This ensures that good paying jobs remain in communities as they transition to new clean sources of power generation, so long as those communities are willing to live near a nuclear reactor, of course. That will be problematic. Of course, there will be many, many uh, people who will oppose construction of a nuclear reactor in their local town. A US Department of Energy study analyzed almost 400 coal power plant sites and found that about 80% have characteristics needed to host a nuclear reactor, which is about 320 new nuclear SMRs. In addition, the US Department of Defense plans to build various new micro reactors for the Army, Air Force, and Navy. Achieving economy-wide net zero emissions in the United States by 2050 requires installing 1,500 to 2,000 gigawatt of carbon-free power generation. Clearly, the US thinks that um, most of that will come in the form of nuclear. According to the US government and external modeling, 30 to 50% of this must be clean, firm electric generating capacity. At this point in time, China is installing the equivalent to five nuclear power plants worth of solar energy every week. It's backing that up with batteries. This could be maybe an idea for the United States. Thanks for watching.